On today's show, people are going to storm Area 51. Thanks to the Garage Talks podcast, we talk about our top five favorite trees. And we interview local rap artist Mo Turk, where he talks about his inspirations, navigating the music world as an artist, and when his entire album got stolen. All coming up today on the Segway Podcast. All right, so welcome to the segue. The best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. That's right. Your, you, dude, your delivery of that is so consistent. I love it. <laughs> Theater. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we're going to do a new segment today on this wonderful Thursday. I don't know if it's wonderful on Thursday, but it's, it's wonderful it's gonna today. It's going to be raining so hard. I know. It's beautiful <laughs> today in LeBron's backyard. So this segment is called TNC News. Yep. Not TMZ. No. It is TNC News. We're not going to get sued. No, we're not going to get sued. Anyway, so do you want to start off or do you want me to take it from here? You go first. Okay, so I am I guarantee you guys have heard about this. And if anything has changed in the last couple of days, I apologize. But apparently, people are trying to storm Area 51. <laughs> and by people, I mean currently 1.7 million people. That number is staggering. Last time I checked, it was um, like only like half a million. So, and, and and let me just say that their slogan is "They can't stop us all." <laughs> um, so let me get this straight. Your slogan is already under the assumption. Yeah, some people are gonna die. Yeah, I, not gonna some make of it. us are. Yeah, some of us are not gonna make it. But they can't stop us all. I, you know, and you know, I don't know if you know, they have uh, divisions. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to, yeah, they have. Tell uh, me about the it. The Kyles. The Kyles. There's a like whole division. The Kyles and Chads. What? Those are the people. The Kyles and Chads. Just the trust fund people? What I is don't that? know. What is that? I don't fucking would know. I, would I be a Kyle? Uh, no, you're Tyler. Oh, okay. I think you actually have to be named Kyle. Oh. Do they? Are they the first line of defense? Are, did we I all agree we need, don't we know. don't need this many Kyles and I guess. Chads? Okay. Um, and then there's also the Naruto runners. <laughs> what? I don't know. There's going to run like Naruto. Like, okay. you know, like arms back. Straight up. So we all understand that either this there's there's three things that can happen. People show up and they die. Yes. People don't show up and nobody dies. Hopefully. Or there's gonna be a select few. Like I let's say out of this one point seven million, let's say like one thousand show up and and, and hopefully it like the military is like guys, like, you know, come on. You gotta go home. <laughs> um so and they're announcing it to everybody. You know, it's it's September 20th, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., you know, conveniently the witching hour. You think it's going to take three hours? <laughs> no, it's going to take 10 minutes. <laughs> um, what, so what happens when you get in? You don't know where you're at. Like, right. let's say somehow, some way, you break that first line of defense. You get in. It's not like, oh, there's the garage. It's in, like, well, like what What are you expecting to find? Like, I think the idea is aliens, obviously. You, you think they're like, that's in the first room? <laughs> like, you no. think it's in the foyer, the foyer? You well, walk just, in, and well, it's just, just oh, there it is. That I don't think there's actually aliens in Area 51. I think they're on a Doce base. I heard there's actually, I, and I did not research this, but I heard there's actually like a base near Dayton, Ohio. A little bit past, like like neighbors with LeBron, but mm-hmm. not quite LeBron. Uh, his backyard. In I heard there's a base there, and that's where they took like a flying saucer. That's where they that took crashed. the Area 51 stuff. Yep. But then maybe this is all just a scam, because now what's what's the new thing? It's It's like while they're storming here... You, we're actually oh, storming. Oh yeah, I just saw what this. Was that? What uh, was that? The the treasury. Yeah. So yeah. Hopefully well, they don't storm my house. I'm gonna be sleeping. <laughs> You're next. Okay. So that so yeah, that's we happening. Move, we yeah, gotta move, move on. on. All right. So so the thing I want to talk about is I just saw this again. It's it's not the newest news, but it's it's still around. It's still being talked about. Is Ariana Grande talking about um, Pete Davidson and Mac Miller and uh, how she's trying to grow past that whole situation? I feel bad. About what happened to Mac Miller, but it seemed like it was kind of self-destructive. I feel bad about the whole thing, obviously, and I I hope Ariana Grande just just finds herself. On a different note, I saw a side by side of Ariana Grande, like when she was cat, where she's like pale redhead, yeah, and now full blown Italian. Like to think, like I scrolled past, and I was like, oh, here's two people. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> same person. That's crazy. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. All right. I don't want to spend too much time on this because apparently it's reported fake. Uh, let's talk about the bagel guy really quick. I've never heard of this before. I don't know today. If, if you guys haven't seen it, there's a giant at the end that just 
<laughs> barrels this guy down. That's pretty good. <laughs> you're not God. You're not my father. Or, and you're not my boss. Yeah. This dude. Apparently, he went to, like, other places and did the same thing. So, he's probably just using it to go viral. Attention. Yeah, but it's like, dude, if, if for any particle of it that's real, like... Maybe it's not your height. <laughs> Maybe it's these random <laughs> outbursts. They're like, hey, we got to go get fish food. They're going to get fish food. He's like, hey, let me tell you something real quick. It's like, dude, maybe maybe you just need to calm down. Do you think uh, the guy at the end that murdered him, do you think he knew it was a joke? <laughs> yeah, he probably was like, dude, I'm joking. Dude, <laughs> no, actually, somebody actually recorded the after of that. Oh, yeah. And he's like yelling at him and he throws his bagels down. And then he's starting to leave and he hears one of the girls behind the thing laughing. And then he's like, Fuck it, I'm going to take my bagels. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> I'm like, hey, you paid for it. Dude, like, I like bagels. Ba- I, I had it. bagels today with uh, sour uh, onion chive uh, cream. It was it was good. I don't know. All right, don't so know. what's next? So, Tyler, have you heard about this boy? I feel really bad about this, too. Mine are both sad. Uh, Cameron Boyce, uh, Disney star. He's like 20 years old, so he's younger than me and you. Did he just pass away? He did just I die. did hear about him. It's really sad. What was he in? What did he do? He was in Jesse. It's a, Disney, it's a Disney show. Isn't that like Woody's sidekick? Like the girl? <laughs> that yeah. is that is also Jesse. But the, no, Jesse was a, is a Disney show after our time on Disney. I was never. I'm actually not a Disney kid. All right. That's beside the point. But you mean like our generation? Yeah. Like, okay. It's like the generation after us. Okay. They're like Zach and Cody. Did he start young? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. He started young. He's, and you know, do you have any idea how he died? Su- suicide? I know. That's a good guess. Oh. Um, But it's not what happened. What happened? No, I, I, when my, when I heard about, it, I was like, my, oh, it's drugs. Yeah, and I looked into it. Not drugs either. Natural causes at twenty, like a tornado, or <laughs> no, no, his body killed him. His body killed him. His yeah. body's like, bort checking out. Yeah, That's well, sad. he had um seizures. Like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. He had seizures. Oh, was it while he was having a seizure? Did he like hit? His yeah, head? he was asleep. Oh. Man. It was asleep and just... That's really sad. It's he, really he sad. Young, he, he said? He's only 20 years old. Jeez. He was a good-looking kid, too. I'm really bad for him. Yeah, I wouldn't feel bad if he was ugly, but since, <laughs> since he's good-looking... Well, you know what sad. I mean. Like, I he was a star. He had such a bright future. Well, hopefully he had a bright future. Yeah. But it's just... Sad. It's... That's my sad yeah, news today. Yeah, to the family. Honestly. That's sad. Yeah. Um, all right, Charlie. Quick question. Yes. So, you let's say you're in Atlanta. Okay. And, Atlanta. You know, yeah, you know, you, you want to see Matty Ryan. Uh, you know, I'll keep sports out of this. So you're in Atlanta, <laughs> you're driving, and all you see an armored truck in front of you, and let's just say the back door flies open, and all this money <laughs> is flying out and about. Do you keep driving? Do you stop and tell the guy, hey, sir, the back of your car, it's open? <laughs> or do you whip out and get some of that cash? Obviously, see. Do you really, though? Am I not supposed to say something? No, 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 no. I'm asking what you really like. Yeah, for, I'm asking for comedy's sake if that's what you're saying, or if you really believe you would. I mean, I'd I would. I'm probably sad. trying to get some money. Okay, so here's the interesting thing a lot of people did that. A lot of people went with C. So a lot of people also recorded it. Yeah, sure. So the police are claiming we have surveillance footage, we have people's videos, we have your license plates. If you bring it back, it's all good. Oh my God. So people have actually, like, there's, there's you know, one of those phony photos where somebody's shaking hands and they're looking at the camera and they're like, uh-huh. you know, it's like the cheesiest photo in the world. Like mm-hmm. a cop is holding hands with some. Citizen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those photos of guys bringing back money. This is what I believe is happening. And this is what I hope is happening. I like, OK, let's say you pull over and you get $60,000. Yeah. You bring back 2000 you clear your name, you give a little back, and you keep a little for I mean, yourself. that's not a bad idea. That's probably what I I guarantee you those people, if anybody who actually brought all of the money back, like, you can't tell how much you're grabbing in that video. So that way you're, I, and you know what, shout out to everybody in Atlanta. I hope you're doing this. I'm not, like, anti-government. I'm not saying, like, but, you know, you know if that, if the opportunity comes. That's like winning the lottery. When does that ever exactly. happen? Exactly. So pay your taxes, bring back about, you know, 8%, 10%. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's less than taxes. Bring back 10%, shake hands with a cop, you know, give him a nice pat on the butt, and then uh, pocket the rest. And then you cleared your name. Pay your student debt. And you know what? Hey, they probably, no matter how much money came out of that armored <laughs> truck, you know, student debts probably They'd have to be a semi. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I like for the you know respect to the people that are actually bringing back all their money i bet there's so many people that think it's a bluff and they're not bringing any back i would probably bring back a, a small percentage just to clear my name 
Uh, I don't even know what I would do. That's such a weird situation. Yeah, so that's happening in Atlanta. So that that is TNC News, Tyler and Charlie News. So we got a tweet from the Garage Talks podcast, and they said, uh, you know, do you guys like trees? And we said, well, I actually screenshot it, and I was like, what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> so I listened to the podcast, and um, they do a list of trees. So we decided to do... You know, we're going to come come back at them and do a, a list of trees. Yeah, they're down in Florida, and I th- I believe that they check, uh, they like, they do brews. They chill out, and they drink Yeah, they beer. do drinking and stuff. I listen to them, and they are really cool. They have, definitely have good chemistry. Mm-hmm. And, and and I didn't even, like, start on their first episode, but now I will associate White Claw with them. I know, right? And I love White Claw, because everyone does. So I, I guess I'd... shout out to them for that. You never tried it? I haven't tried it. I have one in my fridge right now. I'm good. Anyway, so they <laughs> asked us, what are your top five trees? So these are our... Our, 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 I hate those. Because in Ohio, we don't say our. Like, no. if you go to other places, they say our, O-U-R. We just say our, like our. you're saying it A-R-E. Like, R-R. R-R. They're R-R. Yeah, R. Top. Yeah, but, like, our. Yeah, these are that's... our, these are our top five trees. Feels wrong. All right. Top five. I'm going to shout out a game. I love, guarantee, most of you guys have not heard of it, Deadly Premonition. It is the ultimate, it, I mean, it came out in 2010, looks like a PlayStation 2 game. Who done it? Mystery. You're an FBI agent in a small town. Apparently, it's a lot like Twin Peaks. Anyway, they have a red tree, and I don't want to go into. You know what? No spoilers. This game came out nine years ago. You should have <laughs> played it. This the villain. I won't say who the bad guy is. You he you eat the seeds, the red seeds from the red tree, yeah. and a plant grows and busts out of your stomach. Oh the my tree god! Use you are the soil. Do you die? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Shit. That red tree five. Okay. All right. So number four is uh the the true full of trees. From the Lorax uh, by Dr. Seuss. You know, it's a good tree. Like, uh, it's like a yarn kind of thing on top. I, I like the way they look. They kind of like little lollipops, but fluffy. Yeah. So uh, number four. Number three, the Dreaming Tree, which is a bonus. It's a double. It is a amazing Dave Matthews band song on Before These Crowded Streets, 1998. And it's an even better wine. It's actually my favorite wine. If you go to Playhouse Square in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, and you get a Cabernet, it's Dreaming Tree. Love it. Number three, The Dreaming Tree. I thought that was a Riesling. They have Riesling. Actually, they just came out with a rosé at oh. Target. All right, so number two is the Weirwood Tree from Game of Thrones. The God Trees, the old God Trees. The faces, they're white, and they have faces on them with bleeding eyes. Did I tell you that? No, you The eyes not. are bleeding. Well, that's sad. No, they're hardcore. They cry blood. <laughs> so metal. <laughs> um, and the, the leaves are also red. Uh-huh. So it's a very stark kind of image. It's very, very, really cool. And coming in hot, and number one, white oak. White oak. Got good wood. Yeah, it's nice stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. So coming up next, we got our interview with Mo Turk. So make sure you guys stick around for that. On the segue, we got Mo Turk. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. That is Mo Turk. Hi. Straight out of Akron. Recording in LeBron's backyard. Straight in his backyard. That's what we call yep. it. As soon as he left, I moved in. Yep. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put this out here now while we're on the subject, and then we'll get to, you know, music and stuff. Kawhi to to the Clippers, what do you think about that? I think personally, um Kawhi to the Clippers is really tight. Simply because distributing the balance of like superstar athletes to like teams that normally don't have that good a roster and good like a talent right like for one for winning the title for toronto is was like one of the like the crazy is like almost is like i guess the canadian equivalent of the Cavs winning seriously and so and then him leaving him like you know what he get, he got traded there he brought a title and he's what out. Else, what else he got to do? He's going to bring it to bring one to the Clippers. Yeah, clocked in, clocked uh, out. My eyes are glazing over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dude. I was I'm because it's nice because now there's all these teams with two superstars yeah. instead of the three superstars. It's so it's so weird too that like, all these you know like 
you don't realize like how good of friends people are until you see all of these like people coming together like oh yeah you know for anthony davis and lebron and Kyrie and KD. I'm yeah. Like, who who would even know? Like you, they wanted to play together. Like right, right. But like the whole it's it's just the whole sports like NBA is just like a wild just like the wild west right now. Seriously. It's and then so you got crazy. Russell Westbrook Harden teaming up again. Again, that's which... crazy. It, you know it's weird. It's like I don't remember a lot of the 2012 OKC team. Yeah. But like I didn't even remember James Harden played for them until right. like recently, and now it's just like it's just it's just cool to see like people like the NBA players like taking control of them their own like destinies versus like having the teams control it. Right, I think that's really great. That's a big part of LeBron. Like yeah. LeBron kind of started yeah. that player movement. Quick question: <laughs> Are you James Harden? <laughs> I've been called James Harden for many years. I can't play like James Harden at all. I just got. But you can grow your beard out like. I James can Harden. grow my beard like him, but I can't shoot. All right, listen. I think you look like James Harden, and I don't know a thing about basketball. So I mean, there's got to be some kind of correlation there. Well, my first name really is James. That's, so that's it. See, see, that's it's it. It's true. That's it right there. Um, I think that's interesting that we we came up with this like list for the interview, right? Right. And Tyler's just like, I'm gonna throw that list away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you just gotta say fuck it. Mm-hmm. All right. So why did you start this? Start what? <laughs> you know why you're here? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said start this. I could have started. I could have started a bakery. What made you want to get into music? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. This is gonna be okay. When I was in high school, I would read like the liner notes in CDs and mm-hmm. albums and stuff. And I always wanted one day to like have something like that where I could go to a store and then like have people I knew buy it and then read it and be like, Oh, I want to thank this person and this person, and this person. That was the first thing I ever did ever before I even started writing songs. I wrote the thank yous in the liner notes. That's awesome. And then I was like, you know what? Like, if you're going to do that, you might as well, like, might as well make some music, you know? (laughs) So, like, I, I, in high school, I didn't really listen to rap. I listened to, like, top 40 and, like, classic rock music. I wanted to be in a band. I wanted to be, like, Kiss. I wanted to be, like, Gene Simmons. And so I wanted to play bass guitar. And so I started writing, like, rock music, actually. Okay. So I would write, like, I'd have, like... I have no idea of how to play a guitar or any type of instrument, but I always had these melodies in like string chords in my head. And so I just write lyrics and I have, I still have them all, but that's how it really started. So I, I was, I started writing when I was like 15, writing rock songs and, you know, I just kind of write about, you know, my life just like right now I wrote about, I think the first song I wrote about with this girl, I like named Karen. And like the <laughs> that is the whitest Karen. I know. <laughs> Shut I know, up, Karen. I but like I saw, like her last name started with Van, so I wrote a song called Van, and it was like Van, Van. What happened to us? You used to be my lust. You were the one girl I could trust, and now it's just a bust. That was the first thing I ever wrote, and then you know I just kept going, and I just kept writing, and then I stopped for a little bit. And then I, you know, pick back up. And then I didn't really start rapping until my senior year of high school. Like, the last day of my senior year, the last day for seniors, was the first time I ever recorded a song rapping. I was in my... This is crazy that I always dreamed about telling the story on, on, <laughs> like, a, on like a radio show. Right, we, got like, we got like two listeners. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, that's not well, true. We have 67 listens as of this moment. That's insane. So that's something. The last day of senior year, I had a friend named Adam, and we went to our school's art room, and we recorded two songs. Uh, I used to rap under the name Jimbo Slice, because somebody somebody in my class said I looked like Kimbo Slice, and so I was like, that'd be a tight rap name, so I just went with it. So I recorded two songs, and uh, from there, I was just like, I'm going to rap, so that was it. When would you say, like, did, did you take it this seriously since the end of high school? Or when would you say, like, this Mo Turk, like, where you're at now, like, this amount of momentum and energy, when did that start? Uh, I mean, I always took it seriously. That's good. I 
I started like basically right after I graduated high school, which was 2010. And I didn't really know. I was, I'm really shy about this kind of thing. So I didn't know anybody who made music or did anything like that. And I had no really, no real direction. So I would just kind of, you know, write in my room and write to myself. And then one of my friends, uh, my friend, Bobby, I was, you know, he liked rap music. He's probably the only person that I was actually like close friends with that like rap music. So, you know, I was telling him about, it. I was like, Hey, you know, we should, we should make some stuff. I'd be at home. Cause I wasn't in school at the time. And he was still in school in high school. And I was, you know, I just graduated. So I was just at home and I was like, Hey, you know, come over and we would rap freestyles. Like I'd find instrumentals online of like songs and we just like freestyle in my basement. And that's how I really like, yeah, we made a mixtape for him called STD Free. I heard that when we were <laughs> when we were auditioning for Quick and Dirty. That was like my first. Yeah. I was listening. I was like, "Is he? Uh, is, is this? Is yeah. he serious?" Yeah, like yeah. Every every song on there is named after an STD, and it's just like oh. pure jokes. This was but, like my first impression of Turk. It was during Quick and Dirty. I remember. Yeah. My would I would always try to take it seriously because I was I was just never funny. But like his stuff was funny. My stuff was more serious. I I made those stuff. That was like 2011. And I made like three or four mixtapes from like 2011 to 2013. And then I stopped for like three years because, you know, I wanted to concentrate on school and I really felt like it was going nowhere. I didn't really know how to like get more exposure and I didn't know how to record properly and do you know all the real technical stuff that goes along with making music i just wrote that was it i found beats off of soundcloud and then i rapped over them and that was it but i really started taking like picking up back again i made a mixtape in 2016 called mad world and that was really my first like reintroduction into rapping and that's where i kind of like kind of you know took off from there my friends anthony and logan i I told them about it they're always been always been super supportive and you know logan gave me the idea for mad world by calling for calling it mad world so it, it really began from there and then you know um doing mad world and dreamweaver and hungry like the wolf and then coming really magenta was really like the first time i ever actually told more than just like my close friends about me rapping all right, so I mean, do you still take that process when you're writing today? Which like, one? like what process do you do? Like, what? How do you write? Like, do you do you sit down and just write? Or like... Oh, um, I mean, I try to write. If ever I get something in my head, I always try to write it down. But really, the way I write is if I if I have a beat, I listen to it, and then whatever comes to me, I just write down. So a lot of songs that I write are usually like. If I, if I hear something and I instantly know, I wrote Never Coming Back. I literally, the first time I heard that beat, that was the first thing that came to my head. It was Never Coming Back, Never <laughs> Coming Back. And, I, and the, so that's what I wrote. But, you know, there are certain songs I write where it takes me a while because I just don't know what to say. So, I mean, it, it just it really just depends on what I'm given as a template to go from. Are they free beats or do you have to pay for them? I've been really fortunate and like a lot of the early stuff I did was just like free beats I found on SoundCloud and on like, you know, like people making beat tapes and putting them on like Dat Piff and stuff. And then I just kind of like took them. I didn't really, I didn't sell any of it. I didn't make any money off of it. So I just assumed it was all good. But like a lot of my recent stuff, um, my last couple albums, Bricks and How to Make Money While Crying. Those were all free beats given to me by the producer of the album, Mimar, who's been super supportive and really, he's really been helpful for me. I, interestingly, I, I found him on Reddit. There's a, you know, like our backslash making hip hop <laughs> and he, there's just like forums for this. And there was like a section where you know, called a collab call where, you know, you can, you're a producer, you're a rapper, you know, you're looking for other people. And you're looking for, you know, you're trying to help each other. And he was like, yeah, I'm making a, I'm making an album and I need rappers. And I was like, all right. So I sent him my stuff and he's like, yeah, I really like, I sent him, um, hungry like the wolf. 
and he's like, yeah, I really like this. I really like this song off of this. Let's do something. And so I did a couple songs for him from there. He was like, yeah, man, your stuff's really dope, man. We should collab sometime on the album. And I was like, okay, you know, first I was like really skeptical, but then I was like, all right, cool. So he gave me a couple beats, which ended up being attack mode and equal from Magenta. And he was like, yeah, man, I got all these beats. I'll just give them to you. And, you know, we can make a whole project. You know, he just sent me those. You know, it's it's just been a lot of like, <laughs> like random internet friendships I've made with people. And, you know, I've only really realistically recently only paid for like two beats. But like, you know, other than that, like a lot of the beats have just been through people I've met online who've been really generous. Isn't it kind of amazing, like the power of networking? Because there are music producers that charge like hundreds of dollars for beats yeah, i'm trying to get that i'm trying to get like that but yeah, like, yeah yeah but you know i'm, I'm doing what i can but. right but it's cool because it's kind of like if he gives them to you and you use them you guys are helping each other because you're yeah. sponsoring him by using his beats and yeah. he's getting people who are using his beats yeah. so you guys are definitely helping each other yeah. i'm just really grateful for the opportunities that have been presented for me by people like Neymar or Again, the guy that produced um, my latest two singles, uh, Never Coming Back and LeBron Soldier 11, Bronze Baby Shoes. I met him <laughs> through Twitter. Like, I tweeted another story I've always wanted to tell somebody who would probably listen. But um, I, I made a song. There's this radio show from this guy who was on Survivor called uh, The Shane Show. His name's Shane Powers. And I listened to, I used to listen to him, like, all the time when I go work out. And uh, he has this great radio show. That he does and he has um a co-host on there named chris vanger and i i always really try to like shout out people i know in my songs because i think it's really cool yeah so like <laughs> so like you're just hearing a song all of a sudden you hear your name you're like oh my god like i can't believe he did that so i shouted out uh his sidekick is a uh, co-host vanger in one of my songs and then in january i was just like man what can i do to get more Pub, more clout for myself so i tweeted him the song and i was like hey you know if i made a song and i name dropped you you know would you listen to it and play it on your show and they actually replied to me wow and so said no that's half the- <laughs> <laughs> like cool story I, you know, but- I, actually i don't really know if they played it or not because i listened to it but i didn't i didn't really i didn't no but like yeah but they replied to me said yeah i bet we would and then through those tweet those series of tweets i had um this guy who was also like a friend, I guess like a fan of the show and a friend of theirs was like, Hey, you know, I listen to your song, you know, I, you know, I make music too. I'm in a band, you know, I produce, I make beats and, uh, you know, I'd like to collab with you. And so, you know, you go, go to my SoundCloud. If you hear anything, tell me about it and I'll, I'll let you, you know, hop on them. And and that's how it came about. It's just like really random internet stuff that just people just genuinely like what I've been doing. You never know. You never know who's going to like listen to your stuff and enjoy it. Who uh who inspires you? Now? Like, yeah, now. Well, um <laughs> so give me like uh like give me like, top 5. Top yeah, 5 top inspirations five, yeah. now like, and who's past. like started and then like to now. Started. All right. Turk, go ahead. Top 5 inspirations. Top 5 inspirations. That's such a hard question. Um I think m- number 1 I <laughs> it's it's kind of weird for me to say it now because of like recent events but Kanye's always been my number one guy and you know everything since I was in middle school from everything he's done from his music to his fashion to the way he presents himself has always been inspiring to me I've always wanted to be like him up until recently but like you know I've Well always... what he did recently doesn't necessarily negate everything he did prior. Yeah, it's still like somebody's true. early days. Yeah, but you that's, know That's that comes down to separating the artist from the art. Right. Yeah, I and I honestly a lot of what people say said about him before I always you know is always on his side for a lot of stuff when people say, you know, how, you know, arrogant and, and how all this stuff about him, I was always, I was always with them. Cause I never understood that aspect of it. Cause I always just saw that as a, a person being really good at what they do and backing it up. Number two, I think another inspiration for me would be Tyler, the creator. I I've been listening to him since I was like a freshman in college, since I was a freshman in college, my mind was blown the first time I ever saw our future perform. Which coincidentally was like the first time I was in my basement trying to upload my first ever single to MySpace. 
oh, wow. in 2011. <laughs> it was it was St. Patrick's Day 2011. I was in my basement on like like the oldest old computer. My TV just happened to be on MTV, the MTV U Woody Awards, which was actually hosted by Donald Glover. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> came on the TV, and this was the first time I had got exposed to, like, indie music. Yeah. And so I saw Odd Future at the end, and I was just like, oh, my God, I've never seen anything like this before. And I just immediately went on there, and I just became a huge fan And everything he's done since. every Every album he's done has just been, like, just such a progression of what his goals are and they've they've all been fantastic and his i think in his album that he came out with igor this year is my favorite album yeah i was gonna say he just dropped one didn't he? yeah it's it's fantastic i that's my favorite album of the year so far drake's another inspiration for me i love i love like drake is really like the first person that really like made me jump ship into like listening to rap music full time like best i ever had is one of my all-time favorite songs he's having the best time he's ever had right now <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Kawhi. Yeah. <laughs> i'm just really inspired by anybody who's making really good stuff yeah. Anybody, anybody from like the past or present, I, I just get inspired by anybody who's doing what they want, who's making really good music. So operating. what venues have you played in the area and what's been your favorite one so far? I've played at Annabelle's a couple times in Highland Square. Mm-hmm. I've played at the West Side Bowl in Youngstown, which is a bowling alley. It's really tight. Uh, I, that's, pro, that's one of my favorite ones. Um, I've played at the Rialto, Kenmore. I played at uh, Cling Thing. I played. I played a show last week at Oakdale House. Shouts out! That was an incredibly fun performance. I had a a live band. My uh, roommate Danny is in a new mm-hmm. band called Sanderman or the Banana Hammer, and I had them join me on the last song with Attack Mode. Oh man! Full guitars, drums. It was crazy. That's sick. Um, where else have I played? Dude, I, wait, can we talk about Spring Fest really quick? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw the video of yeah. you running. Yeah, I did Spring Fest too. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about Spring Fest oh, really for sure, quick? For yeah. Sure. How did that go? I didn't really know what to expect. First of all, I had to lie to even get there. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did wait, the what is this story? Okay, this. so um, <laughs> Anthony, who's like my DJ, like my manager, you know, we all, you know, we all, he helps me run this whole shit him and logan helped me run this whole shit his girlfriend who still goes to akron told me that the spring fest this year instead of like getting like a performer they wanted like local artists so they said yeah you should apply so i was like okay cool so i go on there and i apply and it says you have to be a curtain student so i was like mm, fuck that shit i said <laughs> i was still an undergrad yeah and uh, I said that his girlfriend was in my band. Yeah, so I applied through that, and then I got the email that they actually accepted me. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was, like, worried, like, the whole time that they were going to find out that I still wasn't <laughs> So what you're student. saying is they don't check. No, nah, I guess not. <laughs> They're like, this dude got loans? Yeah, all right, we'll, I, let, we'll I mean, let him like, I, there's, there's, you know, undergrad, you know, grad student, all that stuff, faculty. You could have been a teacher. Was that but, a paid gig? No. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, so, and you know, I was worried the whole time they were going to find out and then the day came, like, it was like, there's a lot of people there. It was like kind of rainy. Um, there was a lot of, you know, obvious students who were, you know, in bands doing their thing. What time did you perform? Oh man. I was it like a daytime? Or yeah, was it... yeah. It was like four. Okay. Like four fifteen. I went on. I had like a 25, 20, 25 minute set. That's like a good time though. Cause people are still on campus already. Yeah. There was, there was a lot of people there, but like the amount of people watching the performers was slim compared to the people that were actually at the entire spring fest. Yeah. Cause like I had like maybe like seven or eight people watch me during my set. And there was like at least a couple hundred people there. And so I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm rapping, you know, that got, I got a couple like group of girls here. I got a group of girls here you know, they're, they're, they're vibing with it. They're fucking with it. But like, nobody's really watching me. And I'm just like, man, like what, what can I do? Yeah. What, what <laughs> can I do to get more people to pay attention to me? And then, you know, the last song I do is Bambi. And that's always just like most energy, the most fun song to do. And, you know, they had the stage set up like a, like a festival. And so they also like it was the first time I ever got to use a wireless mic. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> I was I gonna mean, ask about that because so I mean I I'm just over here like I felt legit like so I'm just like you know rapping doing my thing and you know not really people people like you know mobbing their heads listening or whatever and then I get the Bambi and I'm just like 
and it gets to a little breakdown and I'm just like, man, what can I do? What can I do? And I'm just like, you know what, man, you know, you're going to jump off the stage. (laughs) You knew knew as soon as you saw the stage, you were going to jump off of it. I was like, fuck it. So like I took a chance. I just hopped off the stage and I was like, man, I just got to do it. So I took and I just ran through the field. Luckily, the microphone picked up the entire way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I just, you know. If you guys want to see this, it is on Instagram. Yeah, or you just go to my Facebook page in a much better quality. Oh, okay. By yeah. far. So, Turk. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite moment on stage? Is it the Spring Fest thing or is there something else? Uh, the Spring Fest one was definitely a fun moment for me. Um, another show that I did with a, another performer is a friend of mine, Samantha Grace. She dropped her EP and I opened for her at Annabelle's a couple months ago. I'm actually on her EP too. I got a song with her on her. And uh, what kind of music does she do? She does. Uh, she usually did like folk type okay. music, but she did something completely different. It's yeah. not like it's like pop stuff. I yeah, it's Samantha. actually really what? great. I know her. Okay. It's really great. It's really her EP is fantastic. I got I got a story about that too, but I don't I don't know. Yeah, so like I opened for her. And it was just really fun because, like, this was, like, the first performance I had with, like, a lot of girls mm-hmm. that were there. Like, a lot of girls. Like, not, like, a lot of girls, but, like, you know, more more girls than guys. And so, I'm just, like, I'm just, I, it was it was fun because I, I never really had a show that was, like, more females and males. And so, you know, I'm doing all these, like, and I, I, curate, I curated the uh, set list to, like, you know cater to that so i had like a lot of dance songs a lot of fun upbeat songs you know it was just fun. it was a really fun time it was really cool especially going out doing like bambi it, yeah that i think that was a really fun one so what is your spirit animal like what do you think you connect with the most koalas cool that was, all right next next question <laughs> all right i have a question this one I, i'm gonna ask this question and i want you flamingo. to flamingo i can't forget the flamingo <laughs> okay you got built legs though. You're not a flamingo. Uh, no, I only got like one and a half built legs. No. <laughs> I, I tore my Achilles. In oh, I heard and, about that. And so, oh, like, yeah, yeah, that so was... like, it's like my this my my right legs like. So you're more like Kevin Durant, not James Harden. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like half and half now. Like <laughs> it's it's, it's like pretty much like back, but like you know, I, it's not the same. So I'm gonna ask you this question. I want you to answer it as a, a listener and as somebody producing music. Mm-hmm. So if you think about like the landscape of music, like I would say 15 years ago. I was more modern because I had an iPod mm-hmm. and everybody was get moving past CDs and vinyl. Mm-hmm. But now everybody streams music. Everybody uses Spotify. And I'm still like, I still have my iPod that I, if I like have to pull it out of my car, download new music and listen to it, like everything's on my iPod. Mm-hmm. In for, How do you take in music and being somebody that wants to get your music out? What kind of challenges do you face? Because Charlie and I kind of know about that in our own avenue. But like getting people to actually listen to music, like how do you go about that? Um, I, first of all, I love CDs. Yes. And so I used to just buy CDs all the time. And I also love vinyl. I've always loved vinyl since I was in high school and I have, you know, my dad was a DJ and so I kind of like inherited his collection and I bought my own and, you know, for the longest time, that's all I, that's all I would ever do. Like I either go to YouTube or I'd get a CD and listen to it that way but now it's like my cd player broke on my laptop so i can't buy cds and i can't like i use, I go to the library like all the time to get new albums on cd because i don't like i don't really like streaming but yeah like, i kind of i mean my seat my laptop cd player is broken so i have to stream now so i just stream it all on youtube He's like oh YouTube. youtube music gotcha i love youtube music it's great you have your music set up really well on YouTube too. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get control of the Moturk topic. It's really hard. Yeah, because like I'm trying to I'm trying to get my official videos on the same page as my other music. It's really hard, but streaming streaming is the streaming is the right now. So just trying to get people to listen to like sending people links. Like I have I I got like two twitter accounts i got a main twitter account i got like another twitter account that i was using um to like kind of promote the music so i would so and that one i just like i go in i don't know if this is like a a known thing or like whatever but i go in and i type you know into the search bar need to 
need to listen to new music and then there's like always people tweeting like man my playlist is so trash man i, I don't know any i don't listen somebody send me some songs to some new people some new artists and then i use that twitter account and then i just like send them links to my stuff okay so you hashtag i don't know i don't hashtag i, oh. just, I just type in it in because like people tweet that stuff all the time like it's, looking for it, new music yeah people tweet that all the time <laughs> i've used podcast recommendations yeah that's i hashtag that and been like by the way <laughs> if you're interested <laughs> yeah so that i mean that way and you know just kind of like on my pages and you know just kind of word of mouth i would love to have cds but like you know yeah it's it's hard it's hard i got a, i got like a bunch of still cds that i still haven't sold and i'm like man the album came out last year i'm already like two more albums in like what am i gonna do with all these and, but you know how do you go about getting people to come to shows because it, it comes down to more than just posting on Facebook. It feels like you were just asking for advice at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I'm, it's a struggling artist talking about it with a new it's, struggling artist in 2019. It's hard. Because, like... Especially I mean, when the event's paying, right? Because you don't want to just milk your friends and family's money to pay for God, a show that doesn't go to your pocket. You get paid? No, that's like, crazy. Like well, we've made yeah, we've made money, but it's not like nothing you could live off of. But Damn. it's like it's based. I but would it's just love to do a page. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it, like like you get all your friends and family to come, and they each yeah. pay ten bucks a ticket, and then yeah. you leave with like twenty bucks when your friends and family paid a hundred, like yeah. total. It's just kind of like, and I mean, can you imagine having strangers? know your music and go to your show like wouldn't that be like a defining moment it's crazy to me that that could possibly happen because it kind of kind of happens like a little bit already at when i was at work the other day on friday like i don't i don't like when i'm at work like i don't talk to people at all like i just i just do my job you know like i pack food and then i put them in and then we you know send it away, and I have a partner that I work with, and I don't re- I don't really talk to anybody because I I work with all women too, and so it's not like I don't want to talk to them. It's just kind of like the difference in like gender and age for me, and like I just don't know. I'm I'm not really like a good like conversation starter. Yeah, do you just kind of feel like anything you say they wouldn't care about? No, I, I no, know. it's not that. It's just like I just I it's just it's like the opposite for me. It's just like anything they say, I'm just kind of like yeah, I guess. Oh, I mean, you I, don't I, care I, about anything they <laughs> say? No, 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 no. It's not that. It's just like I just I just don't I don't like necessarily connect to what a lot of what they're saying. But I I I try I try yeah. sometimes. But like yeah, so like I was on Friday in the mornings. We have to like load vans up to like so they deliver the food. And I had I was out. I'm usually out front. I had left because I needed to go check on something. I came back and one of the ladies were like, they were talking about me and they're like, oh, you should listen to his music. It's really good. Wow. And, uh, and they're like, yeah, you should see his Bumblebee video. <laughs> and, I was, I, and I was like, wait, she's like, don't forget about us when you're famous. And I was like, wait, you're talking about me? I was like, I, I <laughs> he was already thinking, is there another Bumblebee video? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I had no idea they even like heard any of it. Yeah. And so like, when I was, you know, you know, got later in the day, you know, they start talking about it again and they're like, yeah, you know, we didn't, we didn't know your rapper. He's like, yeah, you know, go on his Facebook, you know, he did theater and you know, he's, you know, does rap music. They're like, really? I, I had no idea people even paid attention to all that. Cause I don't, I don't even go on Facebook all that, yeah. like that you know, it, isn't it kind of crazy? Like you put all this effort into promoting, but then when anybody says anything, like I was at a family reunion yesterday and my sister was like, so what's this about a podcast? I was like taken back. I was like, How'd you hear? <laughs> and I think about it. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. Same thing happened yeah. to me. How, like, okay. What, how will it feel the first time you look down and you see somebody that you don't know, you don't know their name, and they're rapping your lyrics back to you? God. You know, that kind of happened. I mean, what? That, not, not kind of happened. The show we did at the Oakdale house was like, it's like rock band, indie rock, you mm-hmm. know, alternative type bands and stuff. But they were there was a lot of people. I had, you know, my hype man, Raw Dog, Diesel hyping people up and i'm like my roommates are super supportive always been you know they do music and other art forms too and they were there and i had you know he was like you know wave your hands like this and everybody was doing it and i was just like whoa and then you know i'm (laughs) rapping my songs you know you know my roommate was singing this my songs back to me was singing this rapping with me i was like whoa it's so weird to think that like people actually legitimately enjoy what you're doing when you're like especially when you're just like starting out you're practically nobody 
Like, it's just such a, it's so nice too. Not like the satisfaction, the gratification, but just to know that like what you're doing is making an impact somehow. It's fantastic. So this is kind of like two and one. So like, what is a short term goal you have? And so like, what's after this EP that drops right now? Yeah. Um, a short term goal of mine. I want to play South by Southwest next year. I want to play festivals. I my basic goal after making my this next project after it drops in a couple months. I don't know when. I I just want to do more shows because I practically I put out with this one coming up four albums in the past two years and i want to you know i want to go perform in different states i'd like more people to i you know i don't want to be like vain like this but i i'd like more followers on like twitter or instagram no that stuff matters or, like you yeah. like if somebody's gonna book you it's sad that that's how it is yeah. like they don't before they listen to your music they yeah. go to your page and see how many followers and yeah. likes you have okay name something underrated about akron underrated about akron yep mm-hmm. It's huge. It's there's so much. I LeBron has a big backyard. <laughs> yeah. I it's always amazing to me how expansive Akron is because you go to the different sides, the different corners, north, south, east, yeah. west. You ne- you don't realize how much area Akron covers cuz right. you, you stay cuz if you stay in one area, like, you know, you know, I I lived on the north side for the longest time. But like you never realize how much of the north side cover, how much ground it covers, you know, from like you go from, I don't know, like Chapel Hill to like north, like the high school. And then you go like down to like UA. And that's like I, n- I never realized how truly big Akron was. And there's a lot of cool things about the city. There's a lot of. You know, the music is great. There's a huge music scene, parks galore. It's very pretty. It's a very pretty city. Yeah, surprisingly. It's very, you know, I people like shit on it all the time. If you're from a city and you've mm-hmm. been there for so long, you start hating it. But like, I appreciate the city so much and I love it and I rep it as much as I possibly can. Absolutely. I love it here. All right. So we want to ask you, so you know uh, about Blink-182 and Lil Wayne? Yeah. You finished the question. Because I, want to, <laughs> cause I just wanted to like lead into it. Did you, did you see uh, what just recently happened? about? So I guess Lil Wayne was playing. I think they were in, I want to say they were in Pennsylvania. I, I really don't know where they were. But Lil Wayne got like 15 minutes in. And I guess there was more of a Blink-182 crowd. Yeah. And he was just like, yeah, I'm out. And he left. And he's like, I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing this tour. <laughs> but like, that's tight. It's see, it's funny because he doesn't care. Yeah. But it's like, I think that's like the Little Wayne Blink One Eighty Two combination. Like, what kind of crowd is out there? Or did you have an opinion of this when you first heard of this tour? I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that not, same thing. <laughs> not, not, no disrespect to Little Wayne because he's one of the all time greatest. But like, I just, it's just, it's just. I don't know. Stuff like that is just so like you really think about it. Like when the last time you seriously listened to a Blink One Eighty Two album? Like I ain't heard a Blink One Eighty Two album since like nineteen ninety nine. Like I'm I don't really give a shit, you know. And then pairing it with Lil Wayne, it's like Lil Wayne. Like I don't I don't know. It's just it's cool, I guess, if you're like really hardcore fans of both of them. But like. It's really like, like your music collection not grown since the mid thousands. We have the perfect yeah. tour for you. I, I feel I just, like it's like chocolate sauce on like you know lobster. Like just which one's lobster? I'm not making a judgment on either of them. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah, those I things don't, don't pair. Which yeah. one was chocolate sauce, Charlie? <laughs> Sometimes like a lot of those things are just like uh, why? What's the point? I agree with that. All right, so I got we got two more. I got two more questions. So what's uh what's your favorite song that you've written? Uh, before you answer, I want to say my favorite song is probably bambi or attack mode and tyler would i'm gonna do this in one take (laughs) (laughs) Um, i love lights out dude. thank you thank you um a favorite song i've written definitely bambi i think Um, bambi's the best it's not my favorite but i think it's the best you know what's so crazy about that song uh magenta in general is just like i had a friend named joe i have a friend named joe who told me that like uh, a lot of like the, the the mad world dream we were you know hung like the wolf stuff was really sad and you know he was like man Tur- nobody gives a shit about how sad you are nobody wants to hear that shit you know i had this thing happen to me on new year's in 2018 and then i got really you know i was just really just gone 
And so I, instead I started working on magenta. And so I'm just scouring through beats. I'm just trying to think of like, what would I normally not do? What songs would I normally not do? What type of stuff would I normally not write? And so I have a friend who's a dancer and her name at the time was Bambi. And I hit her up and I said, Hey, if I have a, if I made a song, would you dance to it? And she said, yeah, if it was good enough. So I was huh. like, all right, challenge accepted. So I found this beat off of Reddit, you know, this guy off of Reddit. I said, hey, you know, can I, uh, you know, use one of your beats? I think you're really good. He's like, yeah, sure. Heard this beat. So I was like, oh, my God. Literally heard the song. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? And then bam, it came to me. It was like, Bambi, 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 Bambi. You know, like, show me what you got, you know? So there's like several skits within Magenta that I focus with my friend Joe because he's the whole basis for it. Because he said nobody wanted to hear the sad shit. So I, he, you know, I asked him about what people wanted to hear. You know, he said, you know, people don't care about what you say in songs. You just, they just want to hear a good beat. That's one of like, that's one of like this uh, little, you know, sections. And so that beat is, was like crazy to me. So I was like, I'm going to try to write the most nonsensical like <laughs> no basis like no type of any no substance to its song what's that i could do so that was the, that was like the first thing that came to my mind was like i'm an asshole that ain't new or nothing i got a lot of chicks like a couple dozen like as long as it rhymed to me like i didn't give a shit what the fuck i was saying <laughs> yeah like i mean at the end i was like gotta check it got it got the chips get the dip gotta check pay the tab gotta drink take a sip like it shit don't fucking but it, no but it rolls of off the tongue yeah, it well, just but it yeah. worked whatever he said i tried to write songs based off of what he was saying so i had a section on love so i wrote a bunch of love songs that really weren't love songs you know he said you know people want to hear good beats so i had a section full of really good beats but like i didn't really like get all like lyrical like oh you know i didn't really get really lyrical with them yeah you know? Bambi was a really fun song. That was like the first song I finished when I did Magenta. And I heard that song and I was like, man, this needs something. And I put my friend, I put my guy, Raw Dog Diesel in there. Yeah. And like, cause like I, I just needed something in the middle. Cause that little, like little breakdown, I was just like, man, I can't do this myself. Like I need something, and his his was the only voice that could work. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> said that the voices I did. work together I so well. I the contrast between your voices <laughs> yeah, really pulls it, it together. It was the only thing in my head. Like God, his voice would be so good. <laughs> I, I don't even it. want to describe. It. Just listen to the yeah. song. The song's like, dope. It's a banger. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so I I, I want to hear this story. This will probably be the last one we'll get to. Cool. We'll let you out of here, but I got to hear about this. Somebody stole all your music. Yeah. Tell me about this story. Oh, my God. My God. Okay. So um, Magenta for me was really like new beginning musically and just like personally. And so I take really tremendous pride in that project and everything that happened to it. And it came out. I released it in May of 2018. And, you know, I, I didn't put it on any streaming or anything because, you know, uh, at the, you know, uh, those were all free beats given to me by those people. And, and I didn't own them. So I didn't feel like it was right for me to, like, you know, try to make money off of it. Right. But I kept having, you know, a lot of my friends would say, hey, when are you going to get this on Spotify? When are you going to get this on this? You know, so I'm like, all right, you know, let me try. And so I was like, if I want to, you know, like increase my exposure to more people like i need to have this somewhere where it's more readily available for more people to listen to than just like soundcloud and bandcamp i found this distribution service called amuse which is free like you just upload your stuff and then they you gotta approve it and then it's all free you don't have to pay for anything and so i was, was like all right i'm gonna use this so i tried to upload it in like february of this year? Yeah, of this year. I tried to upload the whole entire thing. I had problems. You know, they said, oh, was this song sampled or this song quality is not good? So I was like, okay. And so I tried it again. And then they're like, oh, this song is not long enough. So I was like, okay, <laughs> fine. And so I made that song longer. And then I cut songs out. And I, I kept going through all of this stuff. And I just didn't understand. I finally got all the stuff through. This was actually, this release was supposed to come out in May. Like I, I wanted the Magenta re-release for streaming to be on the anniversary when I came out with Magenta, but I kept having problems. And so I, I finally got all this stuff clear, you know, and it's all good. I got, you know, the, uh, you know, UPS and the barcode and all that stuff or mm -hmm. whatever. And 
I had to keep re-uploading it because I couldn't edit the songs with the with the distribution service. So I kept having to delete the whole thing and start over. And I I wrote in like you know the, the little like individual codes that go with the you know singles and stuff. And they email me and they're like, "Has this song been uploaded before?" And it was every song on there. Really, every song that I put up was like they're like has this song been i think this this song has been uploaded before this song has been uploaded before there's already a you know a, a code for the song and i was like what are you talking about you guys already gave me a code for that and i put <laughs> it in there what are you guys talking about and i kept emailing them and i'm like what are you guys talking about i already you guys gave me this code i'm using the same code you guys gave me and so they sent me this link to the spotify page from this dude named terry styles and this album called trap money and you know i'm like what the fuck is this shit like this ain't me so i'm like yo like this isn't me i don't know who this is but this isn't me and so one day i was at the gym and i was just like you know let me listen to this and i listened to it and it was literally every single song from magenta wow that the guy changed the name of every song and ordered them in a different order and i don't think I've ever been that mad. I don't think I've been that mad at like something that didn't happen to me already in a yeah. long time. And I literally went home and I was like, yo, this motherfucker stole my whole shit. I was fucking pissed. And so I'd be like, perform it live, dude. Let's hear the songs, man. And, and the thing Play was, the beat. You haven't been that mad since 9-11. <laughs> He's Sorry. like, well, and, this was pretty bad, though. <laughs> and so and so, I was telling everybody about it. And so we started doing research. And there was literally nothing on this guy. Like, he didn't have a Twitter. He didn't have a Facebook, Instagram. There was nothing. It was just this album everywhere. It was everywhere. It was on every streaming service. I don't know who it was. I don't know why they did it. But it was everywhere. And there was no real, like motivation or basis for it like he wasn't even trying to make any money off of it he just put it up and so not only that but i i you know we i went to like the whole youtube and you know they put it on youtube and stuff and i found out that they had did it in june of last year like a month after i released magenta they did it wow how many views did it have um it was like it was like every song at least had like 300 400 views (laughs) wow on youtube uh, you got to do like you, a 301 redirect from that page to yours. Did you like message him? And there was nothing to message. I mean, there he there was this guy wasn't a real person. Did did they take control and action and shut it down or oh, is it yeah, still I, up? I had to I had to I email I found the uh distribution they used and I emailed him and I was like, "Hey, this person, you know, stole my work. Here's here's like links and references to all the stuff that I've done." And then, you know, they took it all off. That's cool. That's cool that they were willing to do that. You know, I had to contact, you know, like individually like Spotify and Apple and Amazon and they took it off too. But like the whole distribution, like they said, you know, shouts out to Joey, a distro kid. Cause, uh, <laughs> Cause like, yeah, he got me the legal team. You know, they took care of it, but like, nice. I, I was just so like, I just didn't understand. And not only that, it was up for like a whole year. Yeah. And I had no idea. That's that, beyond annoying. That's, that's fraudulent yeah yeah and it's not like it's not like you could have even really found it because they changed the name so it's not like it's not (laughs) like your friends and nobody never searched it it just it just was up there under a different name yeah and i i i don't know like that person doesn't exist like whoever it was there's this you must have pissed somebody off it wasn't a gremlin like (laughs) someone did somebody i know know someone did it. i don't know who i we have our theories but like i just boggles my mind that it was up for a whole year yeah i had no idea and like they were just like out of like all the stuff like why would you take my shit like and a, and a <laughs> that's month, take and, it as a compliment maybe yeah. yeah but like a month after i put it up too yeah. like it's just so crazy it was just so crazy that's I mean, not it's just a weird situation but like you know they're taken care of it's all good you know i learned a lesson from it you know you always got to protect yourself like, right i never you know like those songs i put out for free so like, i wasn't really thinking anything of it well you know now i'm just like you know fuck i gotta you know do what you gotta do yeah so that is mo turk uh do you have any shows coming up you want to plug in or um keep in mind this is coming out 
Thursday. So if you have yeah, any shows between now and Thursday. Oh, God. Uh, uh, Thursday. You so, know what? If anybody's listening to this and you know they listen to my music and they fuck with it, tell tell somebody, you know, put me on. Put me on a venue. Put me on. I don't care who I'm performing with. I don't give a shit if it's a rap show, a punk show, an indie show. I can do it all. I can I can blend well with all that shit. You know, the next show, I don't know if I can really like even say this, but I'm playing Porch Rocker this year. And so, um, I guess, I mean, fuck. That's I, like August 17th yeah, or August 24th or some something shit. Something like that. Yeah. Two, four, it's it's in August. Yeah. So, you know, but other than that, you know, I'm just, you know, we're always looking, always looking for shows, you know, trying to get out, you know, anywhere, any state, any time, don't matter. We're just trying to get out. I have a new, another album coming out, I guess, I guess album. I don't really, you know, I don't really think of them as albums, but you know, called Late Bloomer that's going to be coming out within, I don't know, August or September. I don't really know. It's done. But like I don't know when I'm gonna put it out. But um yeah, so I got that coming up. I got a new single, a couple new singles out, available everywhere called uh Never Coming Back and LeBron Soldier Eleven. Yeah. And so yeah, but you know, you know, always staying working, always always working on something. And you know, just go listen to it and book me at a show. I'm really fun. I'm a fun I'm a fun guy to watch on stage. That <laughs> yeah. that theater degree really that. helped out. Absolutely. That theater degree helped out tremendously <laughs> in my rap career. <laughs> hey, we appreciate you stopping by. Thank Turk. you so much oh, for thank coming. you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for listening. I'm Tyler. I am Charlie. And this is the segue. The best thing that happened to you on a Thursday. <laughs> I have a lot of friends. I have two That's sets. Good. Of, I have two sets of friends. <laughs>